Welcome to our online service that has been produced specially for you. Hello children! It is so good to see you all online again. Now before we go ahead with our lesson for the day, let's play a quick game. How many of you like stories? I'm sure most of you do. And I'm confident that most of you remember the stories and the moral of the stories. Don't you? Okay, let's play this game then. I'm going to show you a picture of a story. And you have to tell me what the moral of the story is. You can type in your answers in the live chat below. Remember children, you have to tell me the moral of the story, not the name of the story. Okay? Here's your first picture. Guess the moral of the story and type in your answers in the live chat below. Right! It is where there is a will, there is a way. Good job children. Here's your second one. Look at this picture and guess what's the moral of this story. There you go, you got it right again. Slow and steady wins the race. Once again, good job. Now think about this. Imagine your teacher or your parents told you just the moral of the story. Like, where there is a will, there is a way. Or, slow and steady wins the race. Would you have understood those sentences immediately? No, right? It would have been difficult to understand. But when someone tells us a story first, we understand the story. And it is also easier for us to understand the moral of the story. We can then apply the moral of the story in our lives. The same way Jesus spoke to people in stories called parables. Remember children, we learnt about it last Sunday. So, are you ready to learn another parable today? And are you ready to learn how to live according to what Jesus taught us? But before we go ahead, let's pray together and get started. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We seek your blessings and presence to lead us and guide us. Help us to worship you from our heart. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to teach us your kingdom values. We ask that each one of us will listen to the stories told by our teachers as though it's told by you. Enable us to remember all that we are going to learn today and put it in practice in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 18 verse 17 says, Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. God has a special place for children. In fact, He is setting children as an example to the adults on how to worship Him. Are you all ready to worship God and show God how much you love Him? So come on everyone, let's all stand to our feet and praise and worship our God. Hi kids, are we ready for a time of worship today? You know what the Bible says in Proverbs 18.10? That the name of the Lord is a strong tower and all the righteous who run into it are safe. 
So shall we declare that today? That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Come on.
that Jesus told the people who came to him? Okay, now I want you all to picture yourselves as one of the people sitting in the crowd and listening to Jesus as I narrate the story. So let's start. Jesus said, once there were two men who each decided to build a house. These two men went looking for the perfect place to build their house. Now the first man was very wise. He thought carefully about the kind of house he wanted to build. He wanted a house that was very strong so that if a strong wind or if heavy rains came, he did not want his house to break or get washed away. This wise man knew that the most important part of the house is the foundation. The foundation is the first thing that is built and the foundation has to be strong and sturdy to make the house strong and sturdy. So the wise man, he looked everywhere and then he found the perfect place. He found a huge flat rock. This rock could be the foundation for the house. The wise man dug around and chipped the rock until it was a perfect size for his house. And then he built his house on the rock like this. After he was finished, he lived in the house and there were many storms, the winds blew and rain came. But the wise man, he sat comfortably in, the, in his house. He did not worry about the storms because he had built his house on a rock and his house stood nice and firm. But the other man who built his house was foolish. He did not think carefully about the kind of house he should build. He just found a place and started building his house like this. He built his house on the sand. The foundation kept slipping and sliding in the sand. But the foolish man did not care. He just wanted to build a house. When the foolish man had finished building his house, he moved in. And then guess what happened when the first storm came? When the winds blew and then when it started to rain, the foolish man's house fell apart. It fell apart because it did not have a strong foundation. What does the story teach us children? The houses that both the men were building represents their lives. The foolish man built his house on shaky ground. Like what? What's shaky ground? Lies, disobedience, pride, not trusting in God. But the wise man, he did not do that. He built his house on Jesus. Jesus is the rock. He is the firm foundation. What do we mean by that? He built his life on Jesus' teachings. He obeyed and he lived according to God's word. So when the rain and the floods that represents the difficulties and challenges in life came, the life that was built on lies and disobedience and pride, it just fell to the ground. But the life that was built on the firm foundation of Jesus stood strong. So what is Jesus trying to say in this parable, children? He wants to teach us that just like how the foundation of a building is very important, only when the foundation is strong 
can the building stand firm and strong in spite of storms and rains in the same way in our lives our foundation must be strong it must be in jesus now let's see what james chapter 1 verse 22 to 25 says it says do what god's teaching says do not just listen and do nothing when you only sit and listen you are fooling yourselves a person who hears god's teaching and does nothing is like a man looking in a mirror he sees his face and then he goes away and quickly forgets what he looked like but the truly happy person is the one who carefully studies god's perfect law that makes people free he continues to study it he listens to god's teaching and does not forget what he heard then he obeys what god's teaching says when he does this it makes him happy this means that we need to be doers of the word not just listeners if you are people who just sit and listen to god's word and do nothing about it and then if you just keep coming to church every week and then there's no change in our lives no attempt to be obedient or trying to get closer to god each day we are foolish people so children we must listen to god's word and obey and practice it now are you ready for the memory verse it's from matthew chapter 7 verse 24 it says everyone who hears these things i say and obeys them is like a wise man the wise man built his house on rock let's say that again together everyone who hears these things i say and obeys them is like a wise man the wise man built his house on rock matthew chapter 7 verse 24 bye children i'll see you next sunday okay children are you ready for the activity have you all been paying attention to today's lesson let's check i will ask you few questions and i want you to quickly type in your answers in the live chat section are you ready for your first question what did the wise man build his house upon that's right children the wise man built his house upon the rock are you ready for the question 2 what did the foolish man build his house upon yes that's right children the right answer is the foolish man built his house on the sand okay now the third question in our lives who is really the rock very good children jesus is the rock and he is the firm foundation and he will help us stand firm and not fall down now are you ready for the last question what happens when we build our life on the sand a we will go to the beach b when life gets hard we will fall c we will be strong That's right children when life gets hard when we face challenges and difficulties we will fall very good children you did so well Ephesians 6:17 says and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God it is very clear that God knows our battles he knows that we all have battles but he has given us the weapon to fight our battles and we can be sure that the victory is ours the weapon that god has given us is his word now let us put our weapon to use so let's stand up hold your bible high up in the air and make our declaration say this out loud bold and strong with me this is god's word 
This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word, and I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to Him I am in absolute surrender. I walk into the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the Spirit. I manifest the more glorious ministry in the Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi children, have you all been enjoying today's service? I hope you all are. Well, children, we all have understood three things from the parable that we are learning about today. Okay, and what are the three things? Do you all remember? What's the first one? All the wise people built their house on the rock. That's right. What does that mean? It means that they built their life on Jesus, who is the rock. What is number two that we learned? The foolish people built their house on sand. That's right. Which means they build their life in whatever way they feel like. They do not obey God. Correct. And third thing, what did we learn? When the rain comes and the floods came, only those houses on the rock will survive. That's right. Which means when we are faced with difficult situations in life, like temptation, sadness, fear, all of those, only those in obedience with God will be able to go through these situation with ease there will be no difficulty and without worrying about drowning in what in difficult situations correct because the wise people have built their life on Jesus yes now do you all want to know how to become wise men and women of God or wise children of God and build your life on Jesus do you want to become wise? Okay, if you want to become wise, why don't you go ahead and give me a thumbs up in the live chat. And tell me that you want to learn how to become wise and not foolish and build your life on Jesus the rock. Alright children, now that you all are ready and willing to become wise people, wise men and women of God, I'm going to ask you one more question. Can you all tell me how to spell wise? Do you all know how to spell wise? What is the spelling? What's the first letter? It's W. That's right. And what's the second letter? The second letter is I. And the third letter is S. Yes. And the fourth letter is E. W I S E. Wise. Now we are going to use the spelling of wise to remember how to become wise children or wise men and women of God. Let's get started. All right, what is the first letter? W. What does W stand for? It stands for who are we? We have to ask ourselves this question. Who are we? What does that mean, right? Do we recognize what kind of people we are is the question. Think about it. Are we children or people who love to shout out to Jesus in church but when we get home fight with our siblings or are we children who are very obedient in Sunday school but when we go home are we disobedient to our parents or who else are we are we people who are generous and kind only so that Others would appreciate us? And are we mean and nasty to our friends otherwise when nobody is looking at us? If you have answered yes to any of these questions or situations that I spoke about, right? 
then there's something that we need to do. And what is that? We should make an effort to change and be obedient to God. That's right. We can repent for our behavior and actions and ask Jesus for forgiveness for our sins, for our behavior until now. And then what do we do? We invite Jesus into our lives. That brings us to the next letter. You can already guess, I suppose, I. I stands for invite Jesus, invite, yes. We invite Jesus into our lives as the only Lord and Savior, okay? It is not enough uh, to just go to the church with our parents or it's not enough for us to just watch the service online every Sunday without fail. If we don't want to be washed away by the flood that's coming or difficult situations that are going to come our way, we have to bring Jesus into our lives. He is our strong foundation. Remember one thing children, Jesus will not force himself into our lives. He will not enter our lives until we invite him into our lives. Okay. Now, what's the next letter? Is S. What does S stand for? S stands for surrender. See that? Now, you have examined yourself. You've asked the question of who are we. Then you've invited Jesus in. Right? And at the end of your walk with Jesus, does this finish here your walk with Jesus no your life only begins after you invited Jesus it's only getting started now what is the real life it is surrendering our life to Jesus we let Jesus take control we are no longer doing things the way we wanted in our lives no more talking back to our parents right and our teachers or any elders for that matter what else are we not going to do no more lying, cheating, stealing. No, we can't do all of that because we've surrendered to Jesus. No more pretending to be good children, but we'll genuinely become good children. We'll completely surrender our lives to Jesus and let Jesus take over and live exactly how God wants us to live. What's the last one, final one? E. What does E stand for? E stands for example. We must set an example for people around us. It is, is it enough uh, if we fix only our lives and get on with our life? No, Jesus did not call us to be selfish. Did he? No, he called us to share his love with everyone. Sometimes we may not get the opportunity to share God's love or even the gospel with everyone. But many a times the way we live our lives shows God's love. There are many people who, do, who you may not know but are watching your lives and learning from you. Right? Setting a good example in everything we do is as important as sharing the gospel with everyone. Right children? So how do we become wise? We question ourselves. Who are we? Identify our characteristics and repent for the kind of life that we have been living till date. And we invite Jesus and we surrender our lives to God and we set an example for everyone around us. Alright? Get ready to set your life on Jesus, who's the rock and is the firm foundation for our lives. Jesus is
children let's recap and find out how to become wise and how to live a life on jesus who are we we examine ourselves shall we pray and ask jesus for forgiveness of our behavior until now and to give us wisdom to be pleasing children of god dear jesus as we examine ourselves today we ask you to give you your wisdom so that we can be pleasing children of god and to do your will on the earth lord in jesus name i pray amen let's invite jesus in our lives if you want jesus to be strong foundation of your life let's all pray and invite him into our lives today dear jesus we know we cannot do anything in our lives without your help so in we invite you to come into our lives to make us strong and mighty in your kingdom and help us to do your will and to do everything according to god's plan and purposes help us to fulfill every word which you have spoken over our lives in jesus mighty name i pray amen now next one is surrender we surrender our life to jesus let's all pray and completely surrender our everyday chores and to live a life according to jesus and according to what god has designed for us loving jesus we surrender our life and everything what we do every talents what we have what you have given us we offer it to you o lord we surrender everything in our life we ask you o lord to help us build our life our foundation on your word o lord in jesus name i pray amen next and very important one we have to be an example to people around us so let us pray and ask god to teach us to be like him every day so that we can be a good example and a representation to jesus to others in our life dear heavenly father thank you for making us your children o oh lord thank you lord that your grace provides everything in our life that your favor surrounds our life lord lord we ask you that help us and give us a heart fill us a heart lord with your love so that we can embrace people around us help us to be a salt and light in this world lord so that we can show people your love so that our life can reflect your love in our life in jesus mighty name we pray amen we hope you enjoyed today's online service we'd love to hear from you tell us what you think write your comments in the live chat section or send an email to kidsonline@apcwo.org also Don't forget to visit us online at apcwo.org/kidsonline. We have fun activities and challenges for you to do. Remember, if you do a good job and send it to us, we may include it in our upcoming online services. So make sure to go to apcwo.org/kidsonline and do one or more of those activities. We'd love to meet you and pray with you immediately after the service you can join us on zoom for a quick catch up using the zoom login id and password provided on the screen before we close is anyone's birthday coming up in this week why don't you type in your name birth date and your age in the live chat section so that we as a team can wish you and pray for you Have you always had questions about the Bible, about Jesus, or how to live for Jesus and didn't know whom to ask? 
why don't you email your questions to us and we'll do our best to answer it in an upcoming online service. The email to write to us is kidsonline at apcwo.org. We look forward to hearing from you all. Let's pray before we close. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day that you have given us. Thank you for this wonderful online service where we could meet with the children and speak to them about your word. Father, be with all the children who are attending the online service and those who could not be with us this day. Be with all of them. Bless them abundantly with your love, joy, peace and grace, Lord Jesus. Be with all the kids and help them to have a wonderful week ahead. A special prayer for all the children celebrating their birthdays this week. Let your grace, your abundance of mercy be with them and bless them through this coming year. Father, help us all to be doers of your word and help us to live a life that's holy, pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen. Bye children. See you on Zoom. Bye children. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye children. See you on Zoom. Oh, 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 oh,